Welcome to Weather Extra on CBS News Bay Area. I'm KPIX 5 meteorologist Paul Hagen. Every week we're taking a closer look at a different weather topic, a deeper dive than what we can do within our daily weathercasts on KPIX. This week I want to focus on everyone's least favorite topic this time of year, pollen and seasonal allergies and how climate change is having an impact on pollen season. Spring-like temperatures now consistently arrive earlier in the year and summer temperatures linger later, meaning that the growing season, the time between the last spring freeze and the first fall freeze, is getting longer. A study published last year in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences showed that human-caused climate change has already worsened North American pollen seasons and climate-driven pollen trends are likely to further exacerbate respiratory health impacts in coming decades. Climate Central analyzed the change in growing season length for 203 different U.S. locations and found that the growing season has gotten longer since 1970, that's the beginning of the satellite era, in 85% of the locations analyzed. The average change across all 203 spots was an increase of 16 days, and in 38 places, that's about 20% of them, the growing season lengthened by at least four weeks. Now, 23 of the worst 25 cities are east of the Rocky Mountains, but the growing season has been getting longer here in the Bay Area as well. Our stretch of warm and dry weather back in January and February got this year's pollen season off to a much earlier start than usual. Many people experience allergies as a minor inconvenience, but longer and more intense pollen seasons can have serious consequences for those with respiratory illnesses like asthma. About 60% of the 25 million Americans with asthma have allergic asthma, where pollen can trigger an asthmatic attack. With longer and more intense pollen seasons, asthma and allergy reactions can become even more severe and expensive to treat. Effective medications and therapy to manage symptoms can be a burden on lower income families, especially since asthma is more prevalent in families living below the poverty line. And the highest asthma diagnoses, hospitalizations are disproportionately found in racial and ethnic minority populations due to a range of factors, including access to health care and discriminatory housing policies. There's another way in which climate change makes pollen season even worse beyond the longer growing season. Increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, part of the global warming cycle. Climate change makes pollen seasons not only longer, but also more intense. Higher carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere can boost plant growth and lead to more pollen production in grasses and ragweed. And with continued high rates of carbon dioxide emissions, the U.S. could face up to a 200 percent increase in pollen production by the end of the century. A 2014 study looked at the relationship between CO2 levels and Timothy grass pollen. They tested CO2 at 400 parts per million, which is the current concentration in the atmosphere. Then they tested it at 800 parts per million. That's where levels are expected to be at the end of the century if the current trends continue. In this study, grass pollen levels tripled when CO2 levels doubled. Another study showed that rising CO2 levels also lead to increased ragweed pollen. Researchers project that if the trends continue, the levels of ragweed pollen will be double by 2060 compared to levels back in 2000. As research like this progresses, so will our ability to predict when and where pollen season changes will occur, which will hopefully help people prepare for and manage the health effects of seasonal allergies. That's it for this week's Weather Extra. Meteorologist Darren Peck will be back next week to cover another topic, and we are inviting you to play a role. If you have a weather or climate question, just email it to weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.